Howdy folks, welcome to Retsu Talk episode 28. We are back to the normal format. Slow Beef is back from his vacation. Hi, how are you? Pretty good, man. I so would... before we get started, it, shut up for one second, please. <laughs> we gotta give props to where props are due, because I haven't done it enough on this podcast. We have people who work tirelessly to make intros for us, letting us siphon the creativity of others for our own personal gain. So I uh, want to thank... What's his name? Vile Spawn. Yeah, that sounds really tough to pronounce. Vile Spawn. No, but... Vile Spawn O'Brien. Oh. He has, he has a last name. He did the uh, he did the intro for the last thing with uh, Mike's mom, and then remixed. Then Joe Roman made a whole bunch of us. I think I used stuff that he submitted from Pax to Almost Present, and whoever I used for this one, good job. If you want to send us a clip, send it our way. Maybe we'll use it. And you'll and you'll get personally <laughs> you'll get weirdly qualified like maybe we'll use it. Yeah, and, yeah. And then, I got much less excited as I was making that plug. And then you'll be thanked in episode twenty eight. You no, well more like fifty six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Every, every twenty eighth episode is ever done. Yeah, every twenty eighth episode I like to give the props to people who help us out. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So welcome back, Slow Beef. Thank you. Thank you. You were partying, I understand. It was um, a bachelor party. My uh, brother in laws. Oh. And it was um, it was very it was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. Um, it was very. I mean, it was in Delaware. That's oh, party yeah. city, the party capital of the world. Well, it's funny because I have cousins in Delaware, and um, they go to Dewey Beach. It's called, which I'd n- I had never been to before this. Did it beat Truman Beach? Uh, it did. It did beat Truman Beach. Okay. Um, so it uh, it's but it's it's interesting because it's very party, but central, not quite as sleazy. It's not really a family place, you know. I wouldn't say. Well, it's when like, I think Delaware, I think Sleazy. <laughs> with a capital Z. Wow. You mean as in going to sleep, like Z's coming out? Yes. Very okay. boring place. Gotcha. I do too. No, but it was a very bro kind of place, meaning like, or party, because like, I think I did like 30 like fist pump, fist bumps with people. <laughs> like, I found out, I found that um, when a bunch of like, kind of guys like this like get drunk, that's all I do is high five and fist bumps. Constantly. So people you don't even know? Yeah, it was... I knew my brother-in-law, basically, and that was it. But they were all very friendly and stuff, you know, so it was, it was nice. But we, we got thrown out of a bar, we almost got arrested. Nice. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Tried to sneak into a hotel pool, didn't you? Not exactly. It was our hotel. It was just, oh. like... It was an outdoor pool, and it was after hours, and, you know, everybody was like, fuck it, we're drunk. So I'm like, you know, fuck it. What the hell? And then the cops came, and they were going to arrest us on trespassing. Are you gentlemen yellowing over there? <laughs> so, <laughs> so they came with like two vans, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm really going to get go to jail. Cool, you know, um, for swimming in a hotel pool after hours. You know, I don't know. What Book it, em. I don't know what it was, and I'm not really trying to sound like anything. I didn't. I was just like, eh, you know, what are they going to do? Like, I, you know. They're, they're probably going to bring us down there, write us a ticket, worst case. You know what I mean? Like, we're not, yeah, like, yeah. disorderly or anything like that. I, you know, I wasn't, like, really freaking out. But anyway, one cop was very cool, and he was like, you know what, honestly, he goes, they're guests at the hotel. They broke hotel rules. They didn't really trespass or anything. So they just let us go after taking down our names. So, so we're, yeah. Capital punishment. I can't come back to Delaware ever, but was that ever really a problem to begin with? I wouldn't think so. Mm. Does anyone purposely go to Delaware besides you? Um, well, like I said, my cousins are from there, and, um... Well, they were born there, I'm presuming. Yeah. No, no, they weren't. They lived in, uh, South... It's not Jer- like, hey, let's go party in Delaware. They, they went to South Jersey, and then their father got a job, um, in Delaware, and they had to move. Oh, gross. Yeah, so, Delaware. Um, anyway, oh, and we got to go to this place we got thrown out of called Secrets. This is an interesting idea for a bar. It's a bar on the bay, right? So there's, like, sand areas and shit where you can, like, walk around. It's like you're on the beach. But then there's also tables and chairs in the water. In the water? Yeah. So you could, like, you're, like, kind of, like, not swimming. And it really, it gets about waist deep at the farthest point, you know? But if you like, yeah, and they have, like, a waitress kind of wait out to you to bring you drinks and stuff like that. So this is good in the sense that, oh, it's kind of a neat thing. I, you know, I'm a, I, I love the beach. I'm that kind of guy. You know, like, oh, you're kind of in the water. It's cool. And then the other hand, you're thinking, wow, everyone here is really drunk, so they're all peeing. So, yeah. It's a, well, that's why it's called Secrets, right? Right, yeah. Because they don't tell anybody they're peeing. It's a bay. 
You know, but it's big, but I'm wading through piss here, aren't I? <laughs> and the one guy we were with was really drunk and couldn't stop tackling people. So, like, security kind of, um, uh, security kept, like, warning him and shit. And then, like, I was, like, trying to kind of, like, keep him calm and stop him from doing that and getting us thrown out. But, uh, I had, A, I had just met the guy, and B, he was fucking enormous. Like, he worked in construction mm. and shit, you know? Right. So, like... And then when he said, I'm like, how do I do this without antagonizing him, you know? So we would start to do something like splash another group of people, which we got warned about. So I'd be like, hey, buddy, how are you? It's good to hang out with you, you know what I mean? And be like all friendly out of fucking nowhere, to, you know what I mean? And, and then three choices drop down from the sky and you have to choose one. They actually, it was more like four circled my head, you know, oh, like right, button yeah. prompts and stuff. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was crazy. It was fun, though. I had a good time. So anyway, video games. Um, yeah, well, uh, while you did that, I, I tried a new podcast concept. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, how did I haven't actually listened to the whole thing. Oh, don't. It's total disaster. <laughs> no, it, it, would, it went pretty well. Yeah. But despite my voice doing that weird raising thing it, you do when you don't think something went well uh -huh. or was good. Yeah. Oh, no, I really got I don't know what that's like. Anyway. Yeah. No, it was nice. Uh, you brought in a whole bunch of folks. People of the RP community oh, cool. coming and talking about whatever they please had, um, I don't know, half dozen-ish people on. Cherry Doom helped me out. She was an excellent co-host. Oh, great. Big props. Yeah. And it was an experimental thing, so you don't know what you're getting into entirely as far as audio quality. Uh-huh. So I had a few people whose internet connections weren't weren't so great, but it was fine. You know, it went pretty smoothly, and I think that we had a chat. Chat was going. Chat seemed to enjoy it. I think they liked hearing it live. I hear you. So I would do it again. Maybe I would try to prepare a little bit more beforehand, try to maybe talk to the guests a little bit, like, over Skype, not just kind of sending me a text message saying, hey, what are you going to talk about, you know? I really wish um, I was in on that one, you know, because I tried to call in at one point. Well... Yeah, you were one of the people who was a problem. Well, actually, what happened was when I had perfect connection and I had the time to really talk, that's when I was, like, texting you, like, hey, I'm available. I got to drive for, like, half hour. This would be the perfect time. But you were in the middle of, like, speed run chat or some other bullshit. Right. So, yeah. So um, then you got me as I had to leave, and I was, like, on the phone and blah, blah, blah. So whatever. Hey. Good. Thanks. Thanks for that. No, um... But, you know, maybe we could try a thing where just you and I do a podcast, but we stream it at the same time, so we help the chat kind of dictate what we talk about. Instead of ha bringing in people, have them I'd, I'd be ask us stuff. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Mm. Doing it live. Doing it live. Not bad at all. Um, yeah, absolutely, though. So I remember there was speedrun chat, and I wanted to weigh in on RNG stuff, because that's what everyone really wants to hear about. Yeah, it's like it's such a buzzword going around nowadays. Absolutely. Everyone's into RNG. Abs I'm, I'm not stunned. It didn't roll up that way, yeah. No, not at all. RNG. <laughs> RNG joke. So, uh, I understand you've been streaming. A little bit more lately. What's, uh, what's... Well, I mean, I knew that, because I... We talked about it last week, too, I think, two, yeah. or two weeks ago. But uh, what have Tell you been, me more. What have you been streaming lately, now that you don't have me reading horror stories over it? Or... Right. Well, uh, I streamed, you know, whenever you think entertaining video, something you're really compelled to watch, it's obviously ROM hacks of a JRPG game. Of course, right. Yeah, it's the first thing you go to. It's all the popular... It is it is the thing on YouTube. So you've been, you, you've been streaming that uh, the FF6 ROM hack you were talking about. Uh, we talked about two weeks ago, basically. Yeah, finished it yesterday. So how does a stream? How did a stream of a JRPG go? Because I listened to a little of it, and it seemed <laughs> like I would go with the adverb badly. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Well, that's the thing with streams. They're very low-pressure affairs. Yeah. It's like it's just, you know, playing through a game... Being extra cash about it, just kicking back, talking like, about whatever. That the expectations are much less, I think. Well, do you think Let's Play in general, or let's say something awful Let's Play, should be more like that, or do you think we? What do you what do you think's going on there? Well, I think it just depends on what you want to do. If you want to comprehensively show something off, you kind of want to plan your attack. You know, Let's Play is still still the best way to do that. I think. Mm -hmm. But if you're just wanting to, like, if you don't have much to do, you just kind of want to play a game and spout off whatever's on your mind to random internet strangers, then, you know, streaming covers that pretty well. Couldn't Let's Play cover that, though? 
I would think so, but Let's Play, you don't have that immediate viewer feedback. You'd have oh, fairly immediate feedback as far as, you know, you post a video, people watch it and comment on it, but not as you're playing. So I think it gives you a different way to interact with your audience for, for whatever that's worth. You know, it's interesting. Um, do you remember Super Great Friend? Yeah. Um, he did a stream of some... And I thought this was this would be terrible, honestly, but he did a stream of uh, that 999 game. Oh, yeah. And, well, here's a really interesting thing, too, is, first of all, um, doing video of a Nintendo DS never quite works out right, because it's, first of all, it's such an oddly shaped screen. You know, it's mostly like vertical. You end up with blank space no matter what you do, it seems like. Yeah. So when he, when he streamed it, he actually, what he would do is he would have, like, a dominant screen and a secondary screen that he could somehow switch between. So, let's say about, I don't I know I'm not getting the dimensions exactly right, but let's say two-thirds of the left of the screen was the bottom screen, right? And then the remaining third, the top, would be a smaller version, you know, the top screen of the DS or whatever screen wasn't being used at the time. And then the chat window from the stream itself. So he filled it out right, and uh, he had a thing that he could switch which screen was the dominant screen if he had to go to the bottom, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, interesting. It was a very unique way of doing, like, a DS game in general, first of all. And um, I still don't know that 999 is a great venue for a stream, but uh, like you're saying, you know, hey, if you just want to fuck around and talk to people and stuff, it maybe I watched a little bit, but it seemed fine, so, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you were uh, you, you phoned in, so to speak, because you, you were watching it on your phone? What? I thought you were in a car when you were watching the last stream I was doing. Yeah, I was talking about Super Great Friends 999 stream. Oh, I thought you were talking about my stream from yesterday, just now. Oh, no. We, we could talk about that, I'm sorry. So, your stream I was watching... God almighty, what an egotist. Here we go. <laughs> yes, the Super Great Friend did a good thing. Oh, so like my stream, huh? That we were talking about, right? My stream's great too, right? I'm so, okay, Obi-Wan, we'll talk about that then. No, uh, yeah, I was watching it on my, on my phone, because I have the Twitch TV app for iPhone, which mm. um, kind of blows. I've heard that, yeah. Well, yeah, well, like, um, there's another time you were streaming, right? And I'm there's like, there's never a time when I'm not streaming. Right, but I couldn't find you on the app because there's no way to actually search for users. So, so if you have a, so do you need just the link to the stream? No, you can't do it that way either. Oh, what you really have. So how do you get a stream then? You sign in on the mobile website. You okay. follow the other person. Then you go back to Twitch TV, the app, and say, "Oh, are any of the people I'm following broadcasting?" And what's funny is, when I knew you were streaming and I did that, it said no. It said none of your people you're following are broadcasting. Zero out of one. And I'm like, I know he's streaming, you know. That's how bad my stream was. Right. So I, I closed the app. I killed it out of the background. I started up. Then it picked you up. And that's how I was able to chat and watch the video at the same time. And you were compelled to continue watching because it was so interesting. Oh, my God. You couldn't have fucking died to Kefka more. Uh, that dude made the hack. I, I chose a pretty bad part. I didn't stream the entire playthrough of the game. Uh -huh. But I thought, you know, Kefka's Tower, last thing in the game, maybe people might be interested in it. Sure. But the ROM hacker guys beefed up the boss's HP, like, way too much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after the fact, the ROM hacker guy, he just tends to send me messages after I've been streaming his games. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah, he said, um, he said, yeah, we beefed up, we wanted to make it harder, so we gave him a shitload of HP. We meant for the those boss battles to be a bit more of a war of attrition. Mm -hmm. It's like, so you made it a, a very unstreamable thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you did it, I guess. But it's, I remember I was driving with uh, some people in my family, and then um, when I finally got home and such, um, you seem to have been in the end game. Right. Where it's like black and white, and the people are walking and all that dumb bullshit. Yeah. Decided to phone in some Skype buddies, because I, I didn't think me by myself talking was, was doing it. No, I understand. So right. much, yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, all in all, fun game. If you want to re-experience FF6, have it be a little bit harder, have some mechanics changed, mm -hmm. I think it's a good way to go back and play a much-beloved RPG. Some of the script changes, not so great, but you might groan for a second, it, you, you'll get over it. There are few and far between. You know, uh, I, was, I was thinking of doing a stream myself. Of what? I was uh, thinking maybe that Amnesia game, because I never finished it. And you want to be original. Absolutely. No one's yeah. ever let's play that. No yeah. uh, no scare cam, don't worry. But, um, uh oh, unsubscribed. Uh, ah, forget it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I, uh, I tend to... I, I like that game a lot, but I just never 
fin- I got like kind of stuck at one section, so I never really went back to it. And I figured this time with people chiming in in a little chat window and helping me, that'll first of all increase the atmosphere like 20 fold. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, one thing that uh, Cherry Doom was talking about on the last stream. On the last stream about streaming that was streamed. Are you following? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, she was also talking about how, you know, she's been playing Dark Souls only over stream. So she's been having audience input to help her out the whole time. That's an interesting way to play through a difficult game. It's kind of like yeah. game game facts only, like... Or no, it's like a... You know, like game the, pals. You ever know like a game. bank website? Sometimes they give you a little chat window with the customer service representative. <laughs> it's exactly like that. Yeah, basically. Only they, you know can understand, what, they know what they're talking about. Yeah, the viewers charge you a lot of interest. Right, right. For their interest. Do you have any advice for people who do streams? I, I'm i just recently doing it myself, so I'm kind of negotiating the trials and tribulations of it. Mm-hmm. So I, I think you're just supposed to have fun, honestly. Gotcha. I mean, that's that seems to be what streaming is all about. It's a very low-pressure thing. I think people are very forgiving about mistakes and such, unlike LPs. I think it's just kind of, you know, the, like I said, the expectations are different. Well, I think the thing is, and because I've heard it said outside of SA, the thing about the SA Let's Play forum is LPs are supposed to be really informative and serious, and that's actually not true. Yeah. But the problem is they can't just be crap. Exactly. Yeah. There has to be some, you know, some effort put into it. It's got to be interesting to watch, basically. And I brought up, I mean, you'll get, like, groups like the Tip and 40s, the Soda Pop Boys, things like that. They're mostly fuck-around type of LPs. There's nothing wrong with them. They're funny, yeah. you know, whatever. It's just that, like... But they, you have to, like, kind of at least show that, like, you're not just recording and saying whatever. Because if, mm-hmm. if you do that, you allow that, then you become this place where, like, you'll just allow anything, and then nobody gets watched because everyone's, you know... It's basically the YouTube scenario, right? Yeah. Where, like, you have, like, these weird islands of people, and some get popular and some don't, and, like, there's no rhyme or reason to it, really. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and when I was streaming the game, I was kind of worried at a couple of points where, like, you know, like you said, Kefka was, or one of the Kefka statue thingies was killing me a bunch of times, and I was having to rewind. I was like, yeah, this, people aren't going to like this. But, you know, that's kind of out of my control since I'm just playing it live and don't know what's going to happen. So I don't know what the people are going to see. And I think people understand that. Well, I think uh, there's also a, an interesting notion of um, people will just watch fucking anything. No, um, <laughs> there I, is. one thing during a stream, at the very least, is you do have a chat, so you kind of have something to do. Yeah, you always have somebody to bounce off of, even if you're by yourself. So yeah. if there's a slow part, you can look at the chat. If somebody asks you a question or comments on something, you can be like, oh, person's username. By the way, everyone on Twitch, their mm-hmm. usernames are impossible. What do you mean? They're all like deep? They're like in- hard to pronounce. They're like multi-compound long words squished <laughs> together. It's like DQFQQ, whatever. Yeah, so you want to acknowledge the person asking the question, but it's impossible. Actually, yeah, I noticed that when I was guesting on your uh, your stream there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So fix that, Twitch. Okay, I'll tell. I'll, I'll let them know or whatever. Give them feedback on that app. Well, I guess technically during a YouTube video, if you like, you can always comment. <laughs> Only after you like it and subscribe to it. <laughs> Oh my god. No, uh, follow me on Twitch, please. Don't ever fucking comment yeah. on YouTube. It's the worst yeah. thing. That's not appropriate. Oh my god. And don't don't PM people your opinions on YouTube. Ever. <laughs> this, god damn it. <laughs> so, streaming. Streaming. It's fun. I recommend it. But I need, I need to get back to Mario Galaxy. I've been slacking on that. Oh yeah. And uh, I need to, I've been slacking on Police Knots, I guess. Meaning I haven't even started it. Right. I was actually thinking of doing a couple Let's Fail things because I found a red box down the street from me. Oh. Yeah, they rent games for like two they bucks. They do rent games, yeah. For like two bucks a night. I mean, the selection isn't wonderful, but um, I could get The Last of Us one night, uh, Smurfs Dance Party another night, Smurfs mm. 2 a night after that. Yeah. You know. And actually, this is weird. There's a place called The Game Zone near me, which is like um, a non... An alternate reality? Yes, Okay. You cast it. And, uh, um, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, I can't believe I just stole a Final Fantasy joke. Kind of fucking dork am I? No, um, it's a place, it's like a non-chain game shop where they do rentals and stuff, too. I haven't actually seen, like, a game rental place in forever. What What's a game rental place? Uh, do you remember this place called Blockbuster Video? You might have heard about it, like, read about it in a textbook or something. 
Mm, is that like a Tetris game? It's like because it's called it has block in it. Right. You bust blocks in Tetris. So yeah. It's derivative of that, right? <laughs> Basically. Okay. Right. Well, it's funny because you know how they were killed by Netflix, but nobody ever really. There was like I think I think called GameFly, which tried to do. That's still around, isn't it? It is, but I've heard. I used to hear mixed things about it. Like you, it took forever to get games. They didn't have a great selection. Mm-hmm. And it was expensive, I think, too. Well, the thing about the Netflix, yeah, that's exactly it. With the Netflix model, right? Like you lose a DVD yeah. or something, it's like what, ten dollars, really, twenty? Yeah. You know, whatever. Game, it's like fifty or sixty. So you're, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a little tougher to do, right? Like you right. just just stocking up your inventory is like a fucking huge investment. Not to mention what you might lose. You know, or whatever. Stocking up your inventory. We're done talking about RPG slow beef. <laughs> Let's talk about rentals. Oh dear. Um, but I like the rental like market. You know, I mean, it's it's fun too because uh, I rented it a lot as a as a poor child who relied on his parents to get him games, but they didn't want to pay for games. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. You know, that's exactly it. I played a lot of games like rental and stuff. You know. Yeah. Um, and it would get expensive sometimes because like if you ever. Be, wanted to beat a game and you had tell, you were getting close to the end, you would just rent it again and again. Right. You know, wait a minute, why the fuck don't people do this model on, like, Steam or whatever? Green light it. D- cut, cut this part of the fucking podcast! This is our business! We've got it something to patent! Get out the <laughs> fuck! <laughs> That's why Gibson does the subscription model on That's Ambition. That's it. That's it, just to keep you coming back, yeah. I um, <laughs> By the way, I've had Ambition at the top of my Gamefly list for months, and it is not coming. Well, they have to press it to DVD first. Those, Apparently. Yes. Those high-fidelity vector graphics are tough to come by. Right. <laughs> they so are. Absolutely. So you've been playing anything else recently? No. Or been wanting to play anything else? No, it's been mostly Police Nuts. There's one game I want to Let's Play, which doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Um, because of called? odd tech, it's called Lifeline. Lifeline, I've heard of that. Konami made it. It's a voice-activated adventure game. Oh yeah, that's that's why I've heard of that game because you explained it to me before. I didn't. Did I do it on a podcast? Not on a podcast. No. Let me tell you about Lifeline. Uh, I'll edit that last part out. What's Lifeline, Slow Beef? This new game I've never heard of. I'm glad you asked. I thought it would make good. Um, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you the let's play idea after the game. But uh, so. What you do is you basically order around a waitress in a space hotel. In space. Yeah. Uh, you're a guy um, who you and your fiancé go to a space hotel to celebrate something, but aliens attack, and it becomes kind of a survival horror thing. And it tries to be immersive because your character gets trapped in the control room and has control of the cameras and basic electronic stuff, a la, I guess, Night Trap-ish kind of thing. All right. But there's one character, this uh, waitress named Rio who gets a headset, and you talk to her, and she talks to you. That's the idea. So you tell her things like, open the door, and she's like, you got it, and opens the door. You know what I mean? So I thought it was an interesting kind of premise because it's almost like a text adventure with a very open, like in the sense you have sort of an open parser, but it kind of adds a level of immersion there because you have a character who's like kind of, you know what I mean, like responding to what you're actually saying and stuff. So here's my question. Yes. Voice activated, and this, what platform is this? PlayStation 2. 2. Mm. So, I would imagine an important mechanic of this game, probably an integral mechanic Yes. of this game would be, uh, this thing, what's the word, accuracy. Right, so now you've touched upon why I think this would be a funny game to... I think I'm following your line of thought. My, yeah, my favorite thing about the game is, like, just when you end up breaking all immersion, when you end up just yelling at the game angrily. <laughs> Cause I, I, like, it's so weird. Like, I remember one session where I wanted her to pick up a medical, or a pick up something from a table, like a, an ammo clip, let's say. And I'm like, pick up the ammo. She goes, well, she goes, okay. And then she starts running in circles around the table. And I'm kind of just staring at the game, like, how could it have even misinterpreted that? Like, what? So it thought you said run around the table? I don't know. But she kept going, too. And then I'm like, stop. Pick up the ammo. She goes, okay. And then she uses a medical pack, which you have limited supply of. And, and the really stupid thing Konami did, I can't stand this, is combat works... I, I wish they had just... And it's, like, really stupid, because you're like, shoot, jump left, 
jump left, dodge, shoot the eye, shoot. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's really stupid. Like, I have no idea why they did it that way. It's not exciting. She misunderstands you constantly during it. The only advantage is it's really fucking easy, so, you know. So, and my plan was, um, you know, maybe I could do a let's play of it, and then if you, Proteus or somebody wanted, you could let's play that, and you, you know, mm-hmm. just because, I don't know, it seemed right to do. So that was the sort of idea there. But I, I don't know why, maybe mercifully. If you, I found if you tried to capture a lifeline off of PlayStation 3, uh, this is the only game like this. It kind of corrupts the video a little. Like every 20 or, no, every like couple seconds, the it just goes out of focus. It's a, I'll, it's a really weird thing. I'll post a video of it sometime because it's really exciting. Um, do you give a voice command to your editing software to make it not do that? I, maybe I, maybe that's the trick, right? That might be, yeah. And the other thing, too, is because um, even... I, know, I, I play out my Jersey accent a little, but there's... there's one, well, I mean, whatever. But there's one word I cannot say right, according to Lifeline. Wicked hat. Well, that's Boston. Oh. What's the matter with you? No, it's... um. Forget about it. It's New York. Uh, it's like Brooklyn. Howdy, y'all. Yeah, there you go. Okay. No, it's bag. 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 The word bag? Bag. Right. I Lifeline does not understand me for the life of me. Cause there's this big? Thing. As long as I've opened the game, I have never been able to open the bag. Apparently, you don't bag. need to to finish the game, but there's a bag. I keep telling her, like, bag. look in the bag, and she just bag. shrugs. Yeah, so, well, you know. Well, it's, well it's, you pronounce it bag. I'm saying bag. Ba- bag. Bag. Yeah. Ba- bag. 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 There, are you happy? Uh, Alright, whatever, who cares Let's not do this for another half hour, please Mario, get the bag Alright, that's oh, good no, sorry. Okay. Good, thank you well, Thank you. Very, very helpful here What's next on the stupid agenda? <laughs> well, I've been playing Rogue Legacy lately What is Rogue Legacy? Been getting into a roguelike kick lately Rogue Legacy is a uh, roguelike game So you play, it's, you know, you're a knight You get into a castle, plunder treasure Beat off bosses and shit. But uh, there's the trick is that every time you die, you play as the descendant of whoever died. Yet the descendants all are um, have some genetic problems. So you can pick which descendant you want to play as. So you can play as someone who's nearsighted so they can't see. Uh, sh- everything is blurry beyond what's like really close to you. Okay. You can play as somebody who has vertigo. The entire place will be flipped upside down. Okay. And some stats are sometimes you can just... Does it have to actually do with the original game Rogue? I don't think so. Okay. I'm guessing it's called Rogue Legacy because it's roguelike. What um what platform is it? I am playing it on Steam. Uh, I mean, is it like a beautiful 3D rendered kind of game? 2D? Help me out here. I've never... It's it's very 2D. It's very retro looking. Looks kind of like something you might... I'm boycotting Steam this week. Anyway. Oh, why? Because it's because you can't get it to work on Mac. No, humble bundle. Oh, right. Yeah. So, anyway, um, let me look this up. What's it called? Rogue Legacy? Rogue Legacy. It's, yeah. uh, it's a good game. I'd recommend it. I'm, oh, yeah. I've sunk about six hours into it so far. No, oh, Windows only, yeah. If you know what you're doing, I'm assu- if you're very good at video games, I'm assuming it would be a pretty short playthrough because there are like four bosses, and I'm assuming there's something beyond the fourth boss after you beat that off. But... Mm hmm. Oh, what? Huh? <laughs> it's, uh, it's fun. Yeah. If you beat that off. <sighs> Hold on. Yeah, hey, I'm watching a, a trailer for uh, Rogue Legacy right now. It looks it looks pretty interesting, actually. It's fun. There, you know, some of the traits are things you just kind of learn to avoid, and mm-hmm. so to some degree, it seems like a little bit of it is wasted because you know you don't really want to play as somebody with vertigo because of the mechanics that it changes are a little bit too detrimental to the playthrough. Or if you don't want things to be blurry all the time, you won't play as a nearsighted or farsighted person. Mm-hmm. So you kind of look for the traits that either have a minimal impact or help you out. Right. So to that end, it can be a little bit limiting, but, you know, I, I still recommend it. It's a fun uh, game. Okay. You'll die a lot, but, you know, that's kind of the idea behind the game in the first place, so it works. Sure. Do you like roguelikes? I do. I've played a lot of Binding of Isaac, so countless hours into that. That really a roguelike? Yeah. All right, because I heard a contro- well, how, do you, how do you define roguelike? I heard uh, that's the interesting thing is I've heard a controversial opinion on a different podcast 
about roguelikes, um, mainly mm. the game Spelunky. I don't know if you've ever I've, played that. I have. I've played a little bit of it recently. What do you think of Spelunky? I haven't played enough of it to really have a sound opinion. I've only played through like the tutorial part and a little bit of the the mines. I um I I really like Spelunky, but the question is, is it a roguelike, right? And because I, I heard it was intended, it is not in fact a roguelike. It seems like one to me. Well, what makes the game a roguelike? Well, you go into a dungeon, and the layout of it always changes. That it? Like that's just like. Well, first of all, you know what I hate about roguelikes is the idea, you know, is is that, is that is, when you die, you lose everything? No, more that, like, it is the laziest name for a genre I've ever heard. I have always wondered where that name came from. <laughs> like, you don't call first-person shooters, like, oh, Doom Similars, you know, <laughs> or like, oh, yeah, <laughs> GoldenEye's my favorite quick-like, you know, it's that's ridiculous, but, so that annoys me, but, um, So it came from an original game called Rogue? That was yeah, as I of those mechanics. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, but and it had like that randomly generated dungeon every time, things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And strangely, there's a Wikipedia article for uh, roguelikes, but it's a sun, it's a subgenre of role playing games characterized by level randomization and permanent death. Which then, like, kind of so that's where it gets tricky, right? Because Binding of Isaac doesn't necessarily have like permanent death, where you know what I mean, y'all. Well, when you die, all the upgrades, items, money you have, keys, all right, are all, all right. gone. You don't get those back. I guess that's fair, right? Yeah. You don't. The only things you carry over, really, are whatever you have unlocked that you can get with the next iteration of the character that you play. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I mean, the weird thing is, too, like, roguelike, according to this article, anyway, is that it, it's, like, it, it, it defines a couple of other features, a couple other features, like, combat, turn-based combat system... Magic items are random, which is kind of something in Binding of Isaac in the, in the pills, right? Where, like, the, di- the pills have different effects. Each yes, time. yeah. You can't, like, reliably trust that. Apparently that was the way magic worked in Rogue, you know? Okay. Things like that. So, Rogue Legacy is not that. You have spells and they do definite things. Right. Yeah. Okay, so there's no, like, items do different things, like descriptions and things no, like that. No, the magic is very Castlevania-esque, so you have, you can, like, lob axes in an arc, uh, shoot daggers, you know, that kind of thing. How are you defining magic exactly here? It uses MP. Oh, okay. It's, it's oh. called magic in the game. Well, actually, I guess that makes more sense than the hearts in Castlevania. Though, it does, know. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's weird because I guess this sort of randomly generated dungeon thing is kind of becoming something, and, it, and it's something I kind of appreciate from a technical standpoint, you know? Well, yeah, because you don't have to do too much on the front end as far as, I'm, I'm guessing, as mm-hmm. far as the, you know your standard 40-hour game covering all sorts of different settings, but you just kind of use a few distinct assets and shift them around. I see. Imagine they save a lot of time like that, and you get a lot of uh, replay value out of it. Yeah. Like I said, I've sunk countless hours into Binding of Isaac. But, yeah. You know, more than I've sunk into, say, some AAA game that did not, uh, that put a lot more resources into making the game itself. Right. If that makes sense. It's very, uh, Actually, it's funny that uh, Binding of Isaac apparently falls into the roguelike de- definition of uh, Penny Arcade, actually, which has an article by, they wrote in May of 2013 by, who are the hell are those people? Oh, Powell Markzewski, which includes Binding of Isaac in it, right? Mm-hmm. Where you say, there's like, um, apparently there's a thing called the Berlin Interpretation of roguelikes, which is... I don't know why it needs to be so classified like that, really. You reading have a textbook now? I guess so, right? You know Rocket Cat Games? Uh, they made, no. like, Hook Champ and um, uh, I think there's a Mage Quest kind of game they made or whatever. But anyway, it's an iPhone developer. But, like, that's, like, a thing they asked, too, is, like, uh, wh- what the hell is a good, a better term for a roguelike? Is it, like, randomized survival, chaos survival kind of game, you know? What point, like, you know, because obvi- honestly, Binding of Isaac, Binding of, excuse me, Binding of Isaac, or Spelunky, Spelunky certainly, it's nothing like Rogue, you know? I've never played Rogue, so... Uh, if you, you've probably seen it, it's, it's an ASCII-based game. You know, there's no actual, like, graphics or whatever, like, you're an at symbol. Yeah, right. And you've right. seen games like shit like that, right? Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing, right? So it's like, I guess anything with a sort of randomized level set or whatever... I guess we're calling a roguelike nowadays, but it's not really anything like rogue, but there's no great term for it. 
but it seems to be around. Maybe you know? the indie developers are taking the term back. <laughs> back from whom exactly, though? The rogue developer? Yeah. They've been monopolizing that term and milking it for years. <laughs> it's time they took that back and made it their own. Now we got Rogue Legacy, we got Binding of Isaac, we got Spelunky, mm -hmm. we've got FTL. It is back, baby. I never played FTL. FTL's really good. What is that like? Is that randomized kind of... It's randomized. You're, uh, uh, you're in a spaceship. Mm -hmm. You're having to get some data to some dudes. Okay. So you go through sectors, and in each of those sectors are randomized areas mm -hmm. so you fly to each area and some event can happen in each area and what that event is you never know going into it i see yeah and you can so get attacked you can bargain with somebody to get uh whatever the currency is called that i can't quite remember sure and so forth and so on until you get to the end and you have to beat off this big boss uh is, do you why do you keep calling it beat off anyway um what? De uh, de is death like permanent? Like what happens when you die in FTL? Yeah, it's it's the same as a uh, as what we understand a roguelike like to be. So when you die, you go back to the very beginning. You choose a new ship, mm -hmm. new crew, and uh, start from the beginning. Well, Splunky's kind of an interesting case, right? Because uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's randomized. It's I think it's fun, but it's very very hard. Like it, it, there's there is instant death in Splunky at times, you know. Yeah, that's another pretty common characteristic of the roguelikes, I think, is pretty high difficulty. Well, oh, pretty high difficulty, okay. Learning from dying, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the tricky thing with randomized games, because, I mean, Binding of Isaac, um, I think most people will agree Binding of Isaac's a good game. Yeah, um, totally. That, that said, some of the random sets you get, or the items you get, completely break the game one way or the other. Yeah, like if you get the turn your tears into bombs item. On right. the first floor, then suddenly everything's trivial. I believe that's Dr. Fetus, right? Dr. Fetus, yeah. Yeah. And then there's Dr. I think there's his remote control, which I forget, but it makes mm -hmm. a cursor as your attack, you know. Right, and then a missile rains down from wherever you have it aimed. Yeah. And you don't need bombs anymore in both mm -hmm. cases, so right. you're just kind of set, you know? Or you go on a floor where you don't have a whole lot of good items and you come across those, like, masks with the hearts that I really, really hate. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Or the widow, that boss with the. Yeah. Jumps yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. And that's the that's the whole shitty thing about it, too, is that, like, uh, yeah, you get those runs where you just get, like, nothing, you know? But at the same time, you don't have to invest too much time in those runs. Right. You, you waste maybe, you know, a few minutes fucking yourself over before starting over and hoping for better. Right. So, yeah, I, I guess so, right? I mean, Spelunky is interesting because um, some, sometimes you can get a level set where, like, I don't know, like, just nothing's helping you, and there's, like, instant death traps, like, fucking everywhere. Or, like, an arrow, like, almost near the start. You know what I mean? So you're automatically going to take a hit no matter what you do. And But then you get, like, runs where, like, a lot of cool shit happens, and there's a lot of hidden stuff in it, which is interesting for, like, a, a game like that, you know? It's, I don't know. I mean, I like it personally. Apparently the multiplayer is supposed to be awesome in Splunky, too. Isn't it local only, though? Yes, it is. That's right. See, that just seems like such a big lost there i guess i i think especially if it's on steam it must be i don't know why like i guess it's a whole fucking headache really thinking about it from a tech perspective to make um a remote multiplayer yeah you know? latency issues and such well i mean like, like there's that i mean there's neck the net code you have to develop obviously or borrow from somebody or, bu or buy from somebody but then there's almost like can you if if you want your players to actually host a game that means you have to write, like, server software, more or less, that's going to handle all the incoming thing. You know what I mean? That's fair, sure. You know, so, or do you say, well, I'm, I'm going to buy a server farm, and you're going to log in with your accounts to my things, like, a la EA, and then completely shit the bed when too many people join up, you know? <laughs> or, you know, or you remember you had the back in the days of, like, Quake 2 and Action Quake and all that, where just, like, random people around the world would host... Or they do that with Minecraft now, I think, right? Where, people, like... A random person hosts, like, a Minecraft session, and you just jump on there, you know? Ooh, I'm going to find some YouTube videos of that. No, oh, yeah, please do. Yeah. No, but, uh, do you ever hear about the thing when Microsoft tried to charge people for doing that? No. Like, it was something with Games for Windows tried. I can't remember the game, but if you wanted to host, like, one, like a server to let people play, on your own hardware, mind you, you have to, like, pay them, like, a licensing fee or something. Hmm. Which is, like, totally, like, wow, that's kind of ballsy. Okay, good luck with that, but... Fortunately, they, they stopped doing that. I haven't played a lot of online multiplayer in a while, honestly. I haven't either. I've 
I can't. I mean, there's so many games now, so many you can play online, but mm. just the urge to do so just isn't there. You know, Payday Two is out, and I've heard that's really good. I never played the first one. It looked really cool. But... I did not either. But from my understanding, it's kind of a Left for Dead model. Right, but only you're robbing banks and shit. Yeah, instead of zombies. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of like Left for Dead insofar as that it's a, uh, it's a Half Life like. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. This is a Left 4 Dead like. It's a Left 4 Dead like, right? Right, right. Okay, got it. Cool. <laughs> this could go so far. It's awesome. This is so podcast like what we're doing. <laughs> it's it's really conver- it's a conversation like, is what a podcast is. It kind of is, yeah. Yeah. You know how you talk to people? Oh, is that when, like, go out like? Well, here, yeah, yes. It's, yeah. so, it's social like, is the yeah. thing. Um, absolutely. <laughs> Why the hell not? Okay. Uh, um, speaking of talking to people, or yeah. not at all, um, sure. Go on. We've, I've been trying a new thing on, uh, Red Supre lately. It's pretty scary. Yeah, so, I call it the House of Horror or whatever. Right. And, um, I, I think the reviews have been mostly positive. Yeah, technical masterpiece, splendid. <laughs> Emmy nominated, <laughs> rogue like, <laughs> rogue like, right? No, it, it's and the problem is there's a fucking treasure trove of these things. Yeah, it's, it's like discovering new grounds. It really again. is. I'm just kind of stunned, um, uh, you know, by how bad they get. Like I had like three to read or whatever, and then I found the Cooking Mama one, and it blew the other three away because it's like, why? <laughs> You were almost going to read some Final Fantasy creepypasta on one of my streams of that game, and I had to hold you back. Yeah, that one was pretty good, though, to be fair. Yeah, I believe um, it. But <laughs> the, the Mega Man one, on my channel, it got some negative reception. Uh, which Mega Man one? Uh, when we were streaming Mega Man Unlimited, I've been gradually uploading those to my YouTube channel, my personal one. Yeah. And some people were like, Get out of here, slow people. We're diabetes. Let's talk about the game. Well, yeah, no, go ahead, enjoy your stream, thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, that's what happens when you do a stream-like, you know, you, it, it it's might... It's true, yeah. yeah. Well, my stream-like became a roguelike, and I didn't know what was going to happen on that stream, and then, you know, you came on and read some stuff. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Well, that was what's odd. People on the Red Supre channel, people liked it. Yeah, but I think on, on your channel... On my it... channel, the reception was a little bit different, because, you know, we're going back to expectations again. Mm-hmm. I think it was because on the first two streams that I uploaded that you did not talk over... It was more of a, let's talk about this game a little bit. And then it was more, that tone shifted dramatically in the last part. Well, um, let me, I'm, I'm glad, though, you stopped me during Final Fantasy, a.k.a. the most exciting game to watch someone else play. Yeah. TM. Yeah, that was like a good, solid three and a half hours of me talking by myself. That was the most engaging thing you'll see in 2013. <laughs> like. 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 A, tw- a 2013 like? 2013 like yeah that'll be like 2014 2015 genre defining <laughs> i think actually um a valley girl mistook one of like spunky or something for a rogue and that's how that all happened oh, okay okay i like, see yeah no more or less now that's making sense <laughs> but, but how do you feel about these these creepypastas um, and the way you're presenting them i i like doing them honestly mm-hmm. you know uh they're fun in a way yeah, I think one of the things we did was, uh, maybe we might have posted the first six, like the ones on your streams, kind of too close together, and a yeah, couple, yeah. few people got kind of sick of it. So I have a bunch of ideas in my head. Um, one of them which I like best, I'll, I won't talk about. You know, I think we are definitely going to try that one for another one, and we'll see how that goes. Is that the one we were brainstorming a little bit about right before we started? Y- yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. And uh, But, you know, as far as releasing them... You know, I had some ideas on that, because we're doing this whole update schedule thing, you know? Right. It's all with, about the pacing. Right, with the podcast Wednesday and things like that, you know? Mm, you're right. Well, what about this, let's just say? Right. Um, I, you know, I, I haven't cleared with this with you at all. This is some behind-the-scenes Retsu Prey kind of planning you're hearing right now. Public domain brainstorming. Right. What do we got? So Wednesday is podcast day. Correct. And you and you release it on Tuesday and tell everybody about it. I, audio version Tuesday, video version Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what if uh, these like uh, these videos were like an extra kind of thing, and um, we release them on Wednesday as sort of a supplemental thing to the podcast? 
and have a more normal Red Supre thing go out on the same day. On what same day? Wednesday? So you're saying do release podcast video Wednesday and release a normal RP kind of thing also on Wednesday? No, no, no. I'm saying... You're saying supplemental. Yeah, I'm saying like a cre- those creepy pasta things. Ah. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. Because they're relatively... Eh, they're not super easy to do, actually. They take a bit. But that way, like, they're not as regular because they take a bit to do. Mm-hmm. And that way, like, it doesn't interrupt the schedule flow of other videos that you might see. You know what I mean? I see. Yeah. Okay. Now that I'm thinking about it, though, nah, it's a stupid idea. I'm glad we talked about it for two minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's talking out. No, um, yeah, because, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, you know, I, it, it's weird because there's this whole notion of, like, what we want to do with this channel and everything, you know? Yeah. That kind of stuff. And it, it, it's weird to talk about that, but it's like, when you've been doing something for, like, a few years like that, you do start to wonder, like, well, where are we going with yeah, this? Yeah, what's the direction here? Yeah. And then there's also the expectation of the audience. We had audience, you know, say, why aren't you doing standard RPs as much? And we've kind of oh, been yeah. over that in previous podcasts before. So it's trying to marry what we want to do with also releasing stuff that people will like, but also not without doing this kind of lowest common denominator stuff. This is what we're going to do. We're making yeah. five more channels. Okay. One's for RP, one's for... Fo- no, I'm kidding. Of course, we'd never do that. Yeah. But, um... No, it's tricky, right? And I think we're still trying to, like, wade through that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Because that's the thing. We want to release content that we feel is good. Yeah. Still. We're not just going to... We don't just want to shoot shit out just because, hey, someone wanted us to do this, so let's do it so we can get a whole bunch of views. Like, we had a standard Retsu Prey set for... Well, when you post this, it'll have been two days ago. The previous yeah. Monday. But we want to redo it, actually. Because mm-hmm. it's... You know, I think it came out good, but I feel like it could have been better. Could have been better, yeah. And then I was, like, thinking about it more, and I'm like, wait, I, I have to say it like this instead and shit like that. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. That kind of thing. Whereas normally I'm just, like, cut and print. I don't give a fuck, you know? Yeah. Serious. I got school shit to worry about. That's very Proton John-like. <laughs> I'm done with school, by the way. Yay. Yay. I got a, I got a B-plus in organizational behavior. So that's uh, pretty good. Yeah. Finger guns, pretty good. I guess. I gotta, now I gotta write the professor's review, and that's gonna be pretty negative, but anyway. Ooh. Oh, Tosh. Uh, RateMyProfessor.com kind of thing? No, I'm not gonna do that. Um, no, nah, he was nice, and I guess he gave me a good grade, so whatever. But so he, what, what grade would you give him? Uh, C. Oh. I mean, he was kind of disorganized, and I didn't know when to do dates were, and, uh, I tweeted about this. Like, he's a weird guy where, like, at one point he, he asked the class, like, are there Indian or Pakistani people here? <laughs> and, like, the, there's, like, three or four, and they raise their hands. And, he's reaching into his coat for a gun just in case. Yeah, and he's like, do you practice yoga? And it's like, are you fucking joking? Like... Because I want to get my automatic A's out of the way before we start the semester. <laughs> what the hell? Like, what? what does this have to do with anything? And then, like... We all kind of were like, what the heck, what are you talking about? He goes, all right, I'll put my foot in my mouth, sorry, or whatever. But it's like... So your professor was Dalsim? Yeah, <laughs> that's, what I, that's the joke I tweeted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was a joke. Damn it. <laughs> sorry. If you followed me on Twitter, maybe you could be up to speed on this stuff. That was so slow we like of me. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Oh, no, I don't know. Like, he'd say, like, he, he told us his one paper was due on Monday, and he's like, so bring it to the Thursday before... He goes, bring it to the previous Thursday so we can review it. And we're all like... The previous Thursday? Yeah, we're like, well, how... Let me just get Mr. Peabody in the Wayback Machine and... Yeah, so he's like, oh, yeah. All right, I guess if you finish it by Thursday, you get extra points. What? Yeah. So so the future Thursday, you get more points than you would at the previous Thursday? No, no, you get more points if you bring it in for the previous Thursday, but it's really due on Monday. Yeah, it's confusing. Uh, A lot of shit was like that, but... We got. It was an interesting subject. It was we. You know, you got to talk about like leadership and teams and things like that. You know. Oh yeah, that sounds great. No. Oh, I, you yeah. know. What What can you translate to Retsu Prey from your class? Selectively show weakness. Uh. Be uh, more. Be more of um a PewDiePie like. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk about roguelikes endlessly. Kind of meander about. You know. Sure. Um, threaten Proton John's life on Twitter. <laughs> oh, did you see that yesterday? 
I did see it, and I had a hard time believing the dude was for real. It's on Saturday. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it. I don't know if it was for real, but it was kind of hilarious because. He... I mean, if I were to make an alt Twitter account, I would basically say the exact same thing. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, even if it was like a joke Twitter account, to what end? Like, so the guy. Yeah, like, well, I was thinking it was a joke thing, but then I checked his Twitter. He already had like six hundred something odd tweets. Yeah. All kind of in, not all spewing bile to Proton John, but still kind of in the same vein of oddity. Yeah, his name was Shadow Shrinky, and yeah, he the one thing that was he called Proton John a Canadian rapist, which I'm like that. I guess is that now an insult? Like uh, on the line with asshole. Like, well, at right? least he put the worse offender up first. <laughs> yeah, right. Before the. Maybe well, he he only rapes Canadians. Is that I, I, that's kind of his mo? I guess. I know. And then I'm egging him on because I now I want to hear more. <laughs> you know, like you tell him, Shadow. You know, We're on your side, dude. Yeah. You and then tell that hack who's boss. Well, it, it was funny because today he's like, "Don't make me get my shuriken." Or whatever. See, yeah, it's about then that gimmick starts coming to the picture a bit more. But then, like, somebody would point that and he goes, What? I'm based on Shadow Man, get it? And it's like, uh... uh... First of all, because first of all, even if you had some weird username personality, why would you base it on Shadow Man of all video game characters? Well, he's the one you can identify with the most. Okay, he was the coolest of the robots. And also, characters. Shadow Man did kind of jump around like a spaz, and he kind of yells like a spaz on Twitter, so it makes sense. There is that, yeah. yeah. So I don't know how Proton John made an enemy, but... Good fucking luck with that! Well, the enemy of my enemy... Oh my god. ...is an anti-Proton John-like. <laughs> I, I would really call Proton John more of a chug of conroy like Oh! Boom! Boom! Yes! It happened! Run away, guys! <laughs> we got you! <laughs> Run away, guys, before I throw my shuriken at you. Right. <laughs> it'll be it'll be in a shinobi like. Somebody on AskFM asked me to play Mario Party 4 with the runaway guys. Um, I was like, okay, no problem. Okay. I'll, I'll, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So look forward to that. I'm glad yeah. You see, you're the likable face of Red Supreme, is the thing, you know. Right. I'm 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 the guy they all hate and and um Dangan, and take away their Danganronpa. So. Right, right. Oh, did you see the new bounty hunting thing going on there? I did. How's that going? It's going good. We got five people so far, and I think five. Were... I was kind of skeptical that you would get any, honestly. Uh, me too, frankly. Yeah. Five. That's impressive. I figured it was going to be more like a warning shot kind of thing, because. I posted, too, about how one of the admins is kind of like, I think we got to guess this thread. <laughs> you know, I, it was it was more like... It, the problem is, I think I'm the only person in the mod forum, with, with the possible exception of Zorak, that's like, just let this thread go on, it's okay. You know what I mean? Right. No one else wants it to. No, they all hate it. Yeah. I mean, like, I, at one point I, I was like, you know, if you like Phoenix Wright, you'll like this, and um, one of the games mods is like, don't compare that piece of shit to Phoenix Wright, and I'm like, wow, okay. Even right? Lotax is tweeting about it, and doing Retsu praise about it. I know, but hey, whatever. Eh. That's alright, now keep sharing accounts, and nobody will have it. Good job. Anyway, but, okay. uh, yeah, we know, it's somebody, this is kind of interesting, though. Somebody on Tumblr, not even a goon or anything, went to a shared account and auto-banned it today. Really? Today, uh, Saturday when we recorded this. Because they didn't want it to get outed and have the thread gassed? I guess so, yeah. Just like a kamikaze maneuver? I don't know, yeah. Save Dragon Rapa! <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they were using the account. I think they found it somehow. And we're just. Oh, like, and found the shared password on Tumblr? Yeah. Yeah. But that's how this whole thing started, is I found one and I logged in and threw oh, the auto right. bin, you know? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I'm wondering if anybody were stupid enough to buy the account back, too. Because, you know, because it, uh, if you're thinking of doing it, I mean, I, for low tax, I guess, feel free, because sure. we could just ban it again. So but, um, you would need the email that the account was used under, right? To re-register? Um, would you? I don't know. I'm trying to remember when I got banned. I've um, never been banned. I... <laughs> we can fix that. Oh, shit. I, I don't remember how. It's been a while. The big problem with being banned, too, by the way, is, uh, you know, you get you get a, a not-safe-for-work image when you try to come back. That's right, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think it, last time I checked, when I, when I was banned in, like, 2000-something, it was Spider-Cock. 
which is a picture I don't know how somebody put their tarantula on their dick and took a picture of it, which I'm just yeah. I I don't know. If you love your pets that much, good for you, but you know I I don't need it. I have the Red Supreme symbol tattooed on my dick. Oh. I have the Red Supreme symbols tra- uh, tattooed on my tarantula. Okay. PETA will be coming for me soon. Good. 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 <laughs> good. Excellent. Indeed. What else we got? Oh my god. I know how we should end this podcast. Okay. The fucking contra Well, did you hear oh. about Hotline Miami 2, the demo? Uh yeah, I did hear about that. What the fuck? That was <laughs> I mean, what were they th- I don't I don't know what they were thinking when they were <laughs> I mean, seriously? Thing to I you know, I know the first game was really fucking out there at that stuff, but to take yeah. it to that level? I mean, I know I understand you want to be edgy, but you know, there's a point where you escalate a little bit too much and potentially alienate a lot of people. Fucking serious. Who the fuck wants to wear a swan mask? Oh, boom. Exactly. Crazy. Mis- misdirection. How are you? We're Red Supre. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's a podcast. Thank you.